I just love when it is laid down, honey. This is almost done. Oh my God, it's like done. It's more, she gonna leave it like that? Oh, she really gonna leave it like that. Like she really gonna walk outside like that. Oh, okay, okay, cool. It's a little risky, you know? These lashes really need to go in the trash. <laughs> when you got glue clumped up on it, like, come on. Listen, this gotta go with that. This gotta go. Alrighty, we are starting off with my low bun hairstyle and then we're gonna do a smoky eye. I parted down the middle because I normally like to do that. I either part down the middle or I do the side. I'm doing the middle today because to be honest, my hair is used to being parted down the middle because I either braid the two sides of my hair under a wig or I do this low bun. So it's just used to being parted like that. So I co-washed my hair to maintain hydration and to keep it more easily pliable. And I use a lot of gel. This is Eco Styler gel. And then you'll see I'll do the got to be and all of that. And this is really my easy hairstyle. I don't be doing twist outs and wash and goes. I keep my natural hair journey very, very simple. So by tying it twice like that, my bun is not too tight, but it's tight enough where I feel like it's secure. I used to tie it maybe three or four times and I would have such a headache, it's annoying. Just using my hands to smooth all this down. I did put some oil on the front of my hair earlier and I also already have leave-in conditioner in my hair from the shower. This is some more gel right here on the side. If you don't already know, gel is water-based, at least this one is that I use. So it takes a long time to dry, FYI, but what does speed up things a bit is it's got to be blue. I like the black one because it doesn't flake. I used to do the yellow one and it does flake. So I take some of this raggedy old edge brush and apply it and then we are gonna slip all this down. So the front of my hair, obviously where it's less dense, it's gonna dry a lot faster than the rest of my head and that's okay. As long as the front is laid down, I don't care if the back is wet. It's a wet style, really. So I'm focusing this where the part is and then more so in the front. And then when I use my finger to bring it all back, it's gonna transfer the got to be toward the back of the hair. I used to do the swoops and the swivels. I don't care about that anymore. <laughs> so I don't be doing it. I will fill in my edges with color wow, you'll see. I just love when it is laid down, honey. All right, then I got my black wrap strips that I live by. These will allow air to pass through the wrap strips to help it dry faster. If you were to tie down a head tie, head scarf, whatever you call it, it's gonna take a longer time to dry because that is going to be a thick piece of cloth. Whereas this is thin and allows air to pass through. If I were to put one more, it might fall off. Yeah, let me put, let me put one more right here. I like for the front of my hair, like I said, to be really flat, I like to be sleek, you know? And then of course the back is, the sides, the back is wavy. It's cute. So I'm going for hydrated, healthy looking skin because it's cooler outside. Granted, I am on my way to a warm weather area, but I still want my face to look hydrated and dewy on the airplane because you know airplanes are dry. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. My shade is 4N74. And I just love this foundation. If you've been here, then you already know that this is tried and true for me. This is the Morphe E63 brush. And just look at how well it blends into my skin. When I apply foundation, I always start toward the middle of the face and then I go outward with whatever's left over on the sponge. Look at that blend, wowzers. And I'm talking low because it's 5 a.m. I, I got that for today. <laughs> this just looks so good. If you've been here, then you saw me wear this in Dubai. The whole trip I did with this in Dubai, wear this in Abu Dhabi and it was, the weather was comfortable. It was February, so it wasn't hot, but it was it was comfortable. And I wore under a mask, on and off masks, and it still looked so good. So I've been wearing this for a while and I love, 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 especially the shade. So if you love this foundation, I want you to comment and let me know, baby. I normally don't put the foundation onto my face like this, but I'm feeling a little bit daring today. <laughs> I stipple over my eyebrows because that's what I like to do. You feel what I'm saying? I like to make my eyebrows look differently when I have on makeup versus my micro bladed brows, obviously. And I'm stippling under my eye as well to apply the product because if you're not careful with brushes, when you're wiping so much, you could be leaving streaks 
or even just spots where there's no product. So I will wipe it a little bit, but then I'll make sure that I go like this to stipple to make sure that it's in place, okay? So stippling along my jawline, as you saw, I didn't take extra product to go around my jawline. I'm taking what's left over on this brush to go on my jawline, okay? Stippling over the brows, I'm not going over my eyelid per se because I am gonna do eyeshadow and you know, there's just no need. I could, but there's no need to bulk up what's above the eyelid. Let me see if this Lawless Conceal the Deal in the shade Mink will pop enough under my eye. If you've been here, this is almost done. Oh my God. It's like done. If you've been here for all, then you know that if I were to use a lighter foundation than I have on today, for some reason I just had the wrong one or whatever, then this concealer may look a little bit dark in a good way because if my face is light, then it's good that the, that the concealer isn't also too light. But if I were to use a darker foundation for whatever reason, it's all I got, I'm trying to make it work, doing a wear test, whatever, then this specific concealer will end up looking mad light because it's going up, up against a shade of foundation for me that is mad dark. Do you understand that? Comment and let me know. That's what I'm trying to say. But I have used this shade Mink before. I used Mink or Clove from Lawless, so I just got a little confused, like which one is this? But yeah. Now, if you've been here for a while, then you already know that I used to love the Amazon sponges. I've been seeing a difference. I've been seeing a difference. I like these e.l.f. cosmetics ones a whole lot better. Granted, I wish that this was a round butt because I like the round butt, but I've been making it work and you'll see how I blend the concealer and my contour together with this sponge. So yeah, I just like it a lot better because it's more, it's less dense. It squeezes down easier and it makes a difference because I've gone back to using the Amazon ones and there's a difference and I don't like that. I just, I just want to enjoy doing my makeup. Like, come on. And these are still very affordable. Okay, so now that we're gonna do the contour, what I do is lift back this paper ever so slightly to reveal my hairline because if your contour is not on your hairline, get far, far away from me. It's a problem for me, okay? Gotta get in the hairline. Another reason why I love being natural is because I just wash it off in the night. When I wash my face, I wash my hairline, I call it a whole good night, you feel what I'm saying? And again, this is a wash and go, laid down, slick back bun type look. Anyway, it's a wet look, so it's going to need to be washed. It only lasts me to where I feel satisfied for a day or two, two days max. Three days I'm really pushing it. It's looking crusty and dry. Mm -mm. So this is my Old Faithful Kat Von D 098 Good Apple Balm. This is a foundation that I love to use as a contour. Now against this foundation color, this pops really well. If I were to put it against a darker foundation color, then this is not gonna pop as much, meaning it's not gonna show up as deep. And that's okay. Usually what I'll do is build it up with my contour powder, which is a face powder. That's just a darker color than me, a darker shade than me. And then I use that to try and deepen it some more. So I always try to explain that because it makes a big difference when you change things. Keeping everything constant, changing one complexion product will make a difference in a way that perhaps you might be intending or in a way where you're like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? What's happening here? So when you change your foundation, you may need to change your concealer and your contour. When you change your concealer, you may need to change your foundation and your contour. When you change your, you shouldn't have to change your contour though, but you know what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> Hi. And then I'm gonna take this Sephora 57 brush, take off the excess product and go right down the side of my nose, baby. And right up to the brow. That just makes such an artistry difference. Thinking back to my days when I was a makeup artist, makes a huge difference when I used to do that. Okay, so here's where I make it work with the sponge. Normally with the butt of the sponge, I would blend this area, the harsh line between the concealer and the contour. But what I do use is this part of the sponge, turning it over and then I blend this area because remember, we don't want any lines of demarcation. I have not said that in so long. So keeping this same format, right? The top is where I have the concealer. The bottom is where I have the contour. Let's turn it this way and do the same thing. This way, I'm not putting my concealer where my contour is and vice versa, all right? And then we're going to keep it simple and turn it this way and do the same. And then I'm going to do under my eyes. Now, you know, I have been enjoying this Glow Wish by Huda Beauty Luminous Pressed Powder. The shade that I use is medium tan 06, okay? I like using this Sephora 99 Pro blush brush because of the way that it's angled. I get right under there. So let me blend just in case. I got any creases. Squeeze the eyes together. 
<laughs> you know, gather some of this pressed powder down the side of the nose and right underneath. I go right there first before anywhere else because I don't want there to be any creases, you know? And then right down the side of the nose, I'm stippling this on. It's gonna look so light and wild, but you're gonna see once it all blends together. I never would have thought I would enjoy putting a highlighter a luminous powder under my eyes. Remember when Tatcha came out with the luminous powder and I tried it? Oh my goodness, I hated it. It was so unusual to me. Similar to when Highlight came out. Highlighting under the eye, it was like, excuse me, why would I do this? And now I can't live without it. So if you recall those days when highlighting first began, comment and let me know because it was unusual. It was just, it was like a what? This is crazy, I'm not going outside like this. <laughs> and then contour came and it, it all came together. So it was like, oh, okay, I could do this. This is a black opal true color press powder in the shade around a clay girl. And honestly, if you ask me, a nice bold highlighting contour goes so well with the smoky eye. It just, the, cause smoky eye is bold look, okay? It just all needs to be very bold. This is an LYS blush brush. And this is the e.l.f. Camo number Rich 66. Zero N. So this is what I would use to deepen things up. I'm not so much setting my face, but I'm just adding a little more dimension by deepening things up. Taking the leftover powder under my chin, right? Nothing extra, just what's left over on the powder brush. And do you see that, you know? Lifting that up in a great way, you know? This is going into the hairline, very, very importante. And I'm still going to use the Colorwell product to fill in the gaps to to make my hairline look more full, duh. Mm -hmm. And then I use face powder. Face powder is very important as well because I like to bring the whole look together. I've talked about face powders forever. I like this one, Dark 4G, Patrick Sta. You feel what I'm saying? Let me know if you're using a face powder because back in the day, no one was doing this. Nobody was going over their face with powder. And I would watch videos and be like, she gonna leave it like that? Oh. She really don't like that. Like she really gonna walk outside like that. Oh, okay, okay, cool. And I don't know if it was the setting spray afterward that made people feel like it was all okay and that it all came together, but I just can't. Now, when I was working at MAC ages ago, we used mineralized skin finish. We did. We did use mineralized skin finish. A lot of things have changed, you know? So uh, I just love a good face powder. Okay, so that brings everything together so that there are no harsh lines. And then because my under eye is already highlighted in such a great way, I just look, look at that glow. I love that. Right? I still use Rose Ink Prismatic Cream Highlighter with my finger. This reminds me of this liquid highlighter I used to love at MAC. I forget the name. It was like a rose gold color. And I literally would go right in the middle of my nose just like this. And I do this with the Rose Ink one because it's so gorge. Using my finger above the lip. You know what I mean? And then right here, I got some pimples, but it's life. So there you go. We're going to highlight under the chin a little bit. Take the other finger that's clean because now we're blending. So first you're applying, the next time you're blending it, right? A little bit more just to go right at the high point of my cheek because under my eye is already blended. I don't highlight my brow bone, although that used to be all the rave. Do you still do that? I know that there are a select few who refuse to let go of certain things, which I'm fine with. Do whatever you want to do because what am I going to do? Whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So same on this side and then using the finger obviously warms it up because we have a pulse and that pulse allows for the warmth from your fingers to warm up the product. Do you feel what I mean? <laughs> you can bring it to the cheek a little bit if you wanted to, you know. Yada. I used to swear by the Rare Beauty, what you call it, what you call it, what you call it. And I've been loving this Rose Ink one because it's a more subtle way to highlight. I'm gonna bring in this contour more with leftover product from this brush. I've still been enjoying this LYS cream blush, which I'm telling you, this is higher standard empower. I never used to like cream blush, yo, and I have been into it lately. Again, pinching the side, right? I've used this cream blush by itself several times, meaning not putting a powder blush on top. But then I remembered that I had purchased the NARS Star Power Cheek Blush Palette. Wow. <laughs> All links are below, by the way. And also follow me on socials if you're not already. And I have been putting that on top of this to get some use out of that. But even by itself, do you see? Really subtle, focusing more on the front of my cheeks because I still want that contour to be there. But when I add the powder blush on top, I do go over the contour again with leftover product to make sure that we still have that shadow there. I'm gonna add some just because, okay, honey, this is the Sephora 59 brush. And here's that blush palette that I was telling you about. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to use a lot of these shades, but I have been using these two right here. So let's start off with this ruby shade. And it looks like these are frosty, 
they're not matte looking for sure. I gotta step back and do this. Cause with blush, you really need to see the whole picture and then apply it. I can't just be right here trying to, cause then I'm looking crazy. So I did use a lighter pink shade and then that ruby type color. So now with that, I don't just leave it. Leftover product, let's focus back here now so that we still have that gradient going, you know? Darker color lightens up to the blush color, okay? And just whatever's left over. And the skin to me right now looks healthy, glowy, just amazing, okay? Great for the airline, great for cold, cooler weather, just all the things. And I still use this Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat Pencil in the shade Natural Black. I recently went to Morphe. I used to use Morphe Java. Listen, I've gotten darker from being in Houston and just being outside. While Morphe Java used to match me ages ago, I don't know when, honey, uh-uh. No way, it was way too light. So then I grabbed Chocolate Mousse from Morphe, thinking that that would work, right? Because I had swatched the two on my hand when I was in the store. And I got chocolate mousse. I purchased maybe six of them because they were having a sale. Girl, I tried chocolate mousse out, which is a black brown type color. Mm -mm, it don't be showing. And that's also a product for me, at least, depending on the foundation that I use, that brow pencil may or may not show up. Because again, you're putting onto a darker canvas. The face is darker. So then if you keep this constant, it might not show. On this particular foundation, this pencil, the natural black shows perfectly the way I need it to be. When I use a different foundation, it'd be, it be looking a little wild. Now, I still love me a good brow bone highlight because it just allows for the eyeshadow to contrast off of it and to pop, okay? Just so good. Now, if you want a full brush bundle, then you can take a look at my Amazon brush video where I did a full face using an Amazon brush set and you can get all the brushes that you need in there to do your whole face. But this particular brush is just a random one out of a different set. I'll link it below though, in case you want to just grab this right here. So this is actually a Jaclyn Hill concealer and I just obviously did what I just did. And like I said, it'll pop the eyeshadow. You'll see soon. I'm sitting under my brow with a Sephora translucent setting powder. I forgot to tap off my brush. So you see how it fell on my face, but this powder is really good because it is very translucent. So it's not going to leave any white marks on my face at all. And I'm just pressing, stippling it basically also not to wipe because if you wipe, you'll wipe off the product. And in this case, it'd be the concealer. There'd be streaks. You feel what I'm saying? And as you saw, I used the translucent powder on my eyelid to take away the shine. And now I'm going to use inside this Huda Beauty palette, I'm going to use the color Legacy because it's a reddish brown shade. And I love to put a reddish brown color right here in the crease, honey. Left and right motions. I love how big this brush is. It's a Sigma E61 brush. And because of my eyelid shape, it fits well. If you don't have a big of a space like this, this brush might overwhelm you. So you gotta just pick a brush that fits in here in a way that applies the color the way you want it to be applied. That probably made no sense to you at all, but oh my God, this is leftover contour product right here in order to take away the harsh line that is inevitably in this area because of the highlight concealer, okay? And I'm gonna use two different eyeshadows this time to build up this black smoky eye. Cause yes, I can go in right now with a black, but let's build this up. It makes a difference, a subtle one, but a difference nonetheless. And I just like that. I like that part of the artist of this all. This is a Sephora Collection matte eyeshadow and it's a shade Sweet Brownie. So taking this same thick fluffy brush that I use in my crease with that color, always tapping off the excess and I'm putting this all over my entire eyelid. Of course, I could just do a brown smoky eye, but I do this look all the time. This is my soft glam look that I always do, but let's make this black today. I am bringing it right into the inner part of my eye, even right up to the front of my brow, just love that look. Tapering it off lightly into my brow bone to just blend everything together. Now, as you can see, I focused some of that brown eyeshadow right here and it just makes a world of a difference. Look how snatched my nose looks. It looks very theatrical, I love it. <laughs> Taking that reddish brown color from the Huda palette again and going under the eye. This is really important to make the whole eye look smoky and dramatic and I'm gonna build up the same exact shades, the reddish brown and then the brown, and then we're gonna add the black all around the eye. So see the difference, the brown color is already here. I'm gonna do the same on this side. 
And now another Sephora collection matte eyeshadow color. This is called Black Lace. And the same fluffy brush. This is black. Gotta be careful. Took some, tapped off the excess. Look down. Actually, JK. Oh, I don't know if I should use a smaller brush. This is black, so <laughs> I need to have more control over this. I want to be a little bit daring. I can control this and figure it out, but I would not advise you to just take this big old brush like I did. It's a little risky. You know, I'm tapping off the excess, always still product on the brush, and I'm lightly, I'm not pressing, I'm lightly feathering this back and front. Now, I very carefully applied the product with the same flat brush, the 414, under my eye. I had to look down and do that, so I couldn't really show you, but essentially, this is what I was doing. Now, we do need to bring back the gradient. I know, a lot of blending. This is my process, and I cannot live without it. This is a Morphe E573 brush, smaller, still fluffy. I'm going to use this to apply and bring back that reddish brown a little bit in my crease to create a gradient. It all just makes sense. You know, right in between here. Need this to look like a sunset in some ways. No harsh lines. Now, of course, we need eyeliner to smoke this out even more. House Labs Optic Intensity. This is the shade Black Onyx Matte. What a difference eyeliner makes, honestly. Let's highlight the inner eye because I still live by an inner eye highlight. I just can't imagine anything else outside of that. <laughs> of course, I could just do this look without an inner eye highlight, but why would I do that? This is the Milk Color Chalk. The shade is Kick. Wall. This is the orange gold shade, although I do enjoy using the champagne silvery gold shade, but let's go with the orangey gold shade today. And this is a Sephora 24 brush. And now I'm prepping my lashes to be put on. These lashes really need to go in the trash. <laughs> when you got glue clumped up on it, like, come on. But if you like me, you wear your lashes several times before you toss them in the garbage. I'm gonna link my lashes below. I wear these all the time. AliExpress, they're like $2, yo. For 5D lashes, you can't beat it. This is the kit. This black eyeliner, I envy, super strong hold, love this. While I'm waiting on that to cure, let's use this Jacqueline Feisty Liquid Lipstick. I got this recently at Morphe. I've never used this shade before, or actually any of her liquid lipsticks before. This is lighter than I wanted. Oh my God, hold on. Oh, I was hoping it would be like a dupe for the TLB Savage. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> We're gonna make it work like usual, but I'm just saying. I wanted it darker brown. Also, while I was at Morphe, I grabbed this liquid lipstick in the shade Sweet Tea. They had a gloss, but it was darker. This looks beautiful. It's a nude, yeah. Wow, this is a, what's the undertone of this brown? Interesting. It's almost orange. Yeah, it has an orange undertone. This combo is actually pretty. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wow, this inner color is surprising me. It's got an orange undertone. I like it. Okay, now for the lashes. Okay, KK. Okay, okay. And you know, lashes make the make the smoky eye pop, but she's the okay. And we have the Lawless mascara that I absolutely love under the lashes. Honey, these make a big difference. <laughs> Listen, it's a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. <laughs> I like this lip, yo. I am shocked. I did not expect this. I love it a lot. Wow. I like that orange undertone of this sweet tea. Like, brown girl friendly? Wow. I mean, I did a whole video on my favorite nude lippies. Listen, this gotta go with that. This gotta go. And we gonna fill this in. Praise be. So, color wow. This is the color black. And it has a brush. I pat, pat, pat the product. And I go in a horizontal motion and fill in my edges. Just like this. Until my satisfaction level reaches its peak. All right. And here's the finished look. I will leave two videos for you to choose from to watch next, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.